What's up everybody, Fritz here. Have you ever had so much power in your BMW that it sounds like a muscle car? Like you have some serious cams in it? Well, if you don't believe me, mine sounds just like this. Now, under normal circumstances, your BMW should not sound like that. Unless, of course, you do an engine swap. But under normal circumstances, and a stock engine, it's probably because one of these went bad. So, let's get underneath the hood and change out the spark plugs. Now the M235i did just go over 50,000 miles. So it's right around the 50 to 60,000 mile interval to change spark plugs. So nothing too out of the ordinary here. But if you're getting that same sound as I was getting from your exhaust system, you're definitely gonna wanna look on your dash and see if a check engine light's on because maybe it's not the spark plug, it could be the ignition coil. Unfortunately for me, I had no check engine light, but considering how the car was running and how I could smell unburnt fuel when I'm at a stoplight, I was pretty sure that it was a misfire. So I decided to change out the spark plugs. From inside the car, it might not sound so evident as when you're outside the car, but you will definitely notice it when you lay down the gas. You'll feel like the power isn't all there, like the car shakes a little bit. And even from the engine bay, you might not be able to hear it. So if you feel this shakiness, this unevenness, and this loss of power, definitely check the back of the car and see if you have that same sound as I did. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and change out these spark plugs and get this BMW back to optimal running condition. In addition to the spark plugs, we'll need a gap tool to properly gap the NGK97506 spark plugs. To measure the gap, we'll use a feeler gauge that has a 0 0.022 and 0 0.023 feeler. And these are the recommended specs coming straight from BM3. The gap of a spark plug is the distance between the tip and in this case, the platinum insert. These plugs come pre-gapped at 0 0.03 inches. And to close the gap, we will push the tip in with our gap tool. I prefer to aim for 0 0.024 feeler. That way, if I overdo it, I have some wiggle room to fall back on. But we still wanna end up at that 0 0.022 or 0 0.023 range. Don't aim to get it in on the first try. Take your time and measure often. Now, in an instance where you happen to go over the 0 0.022, it's no problem. Just use that same gap tool, insert it in like this, and open it back up. Just be careful to not overdo it because you don't wanna consistently flex the tip too much. Now rinse and repeat for the remainder plugs. Once you open the hood and remove the engine cover, you'll notice that we have access to four spark plugs. The fifth and sixth are buried underneath the engine coverings and strut brace. So we need to remove these. Start at the rear foam panel. Be careful though, because it's interlocked with a few plastic inserts. Then remove the two corner plastic covers that are held in with three 10 millimeter nut inserts. The strut brace is held in by four E18s, two at the strut towers and two underneath the circle coverings just below the windshield wipers. With the strut brace removed, we can remove the plastic cover underneath it. This is held in with three 10 millimeter bolts on the passenger side and four 10 millimeter bolts on the driver's side. Peel back the weather stripping and move that plastic covering off to the side. Finally, use a T20 to unmount the O2 sensor holder. With all that out of the way, we now have access to all six plugs. Starting at plug number one, unlock and disconnect it before lifting it out. Now quick PSA here is that you want to take note of the spark plug while it's in its socket. It does not exactly line up linearly with its socket. It has a slight cant to it. 
And this is the reason why we want to limit our amount of use of power tools when removing and installing the spark plugs. We really need the dexterity and textile feedback from our hands when we're installing it. When removing the spark plugs, you'll need a magnetic thin walled 14 millimeter socket. If you don't have one, I'll leave the link for this one down in the description. Now, once you remove the spark plug, you'll notice how dirty it is. This spark plug has definitely served us well, but it sure is time to swap it out. When placing in the new plug, make sure to not use any lubricant, gel, or any dielectric grease here. BMW recommends that we install these dry. And be careful when initially threading it in. But once those threads finally catch, feel free to use a ratchet and torque it down to 23 Newton meters. Reinsert the ignition coil and move on to plug number two, where we'll actually get a close up of this process. When reinserting the ignition coil, you'll see that the electrical connection has a triangular shape to it. When the connection is aligned with the coil, the lock will partially engage. This ensures that the plug is properly connected and we can push it in the remainder of the way. But take note of the notch that locks in the plug into place. Otherwise, the ignition coil will not actually go down far enough to make good contact with the spark plug. Plugs three and four are pretty much the same process as one and two. Just be sure to align the ignition coils to their respective notches. Of course, if you need help with this installation, please let everyone know where you're at in the comment section below. And the same applies to those of you who are willing to help people with this exact job. Moving on to plug number five. This will require the removal of the O2 sensor connections from their holder. Plug 6, on the other hand, has a little bit less room to work with, but still enough space for us to use all the tools that we've been using so far. With all the spark plugs out, we can see that they have a pretty even coating around them. This indicates to us that we have a good fuel to air ratio and the engine's pretty healthy. If you have excessive soot or a buildup or even dark residue here, that can be an indication of something that's going wrong with your engine or your fuel to air ratio. With all the plugs installed, we can reinstall the bracket for the O2 sensors, the plastic panel with its seven 10 millimeter bolts, the strut bar with its four E18 bolts, which will tighten down the strut tower bolts to 28 Newton meters, and the top bolts underneath the windshield wipers to 56 Newton meters. Then you can slide on the weather stripping. And as for the foam panel, I like to start at this insert of the foam first. Make sure that it slides into its interlocking plastic connection first, then stuff it in. When you're done, ensure that the inserts are sticking up and through the foam. And you should be able to see them right here, 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 and here. Now let's get back on those two corner plastic panels and tighten them down with our 10 millimeter wrench.
And lastly, throw on the engine cover. And now we're finally done installing the spark plugs on your BMW. Hopefully your assistant wasn't as active as mine and was a little bit more helpful. But unfortunately for me, it actually wasn't the spark plugs. It was the ignition coil. Fortunately enough, it was ignition coil number one. So it was easy enough just to pop the hood, lift off the engine cover and swap out the ignition coil. We didn't have to undo the brace or anything like that. But that'll be another video for another day. So shout out to my boys over at SV Bimmer because they have this tool that can check pre-codes. This is the reason why I didn't have a check engine light. For some reason, the car did not recognize that there was something wrong with the engine. But in case you change the spark plugs and you still have the same issue as I did, try running your car really hard in first or second gear up to 5,000 or 5,500 RPM. And then if you still don't have a check engine light, go ahead, take it to the shop and have them run it on their diagnostic tool. But if you have any additional questions, leave it for me down in the comment section below. Everything that we use in this video from the spark plugs to the tools are gonna to be in the description links down below. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future maintenance BMW videos. And I'll see all of you guys in the next one.